All right, folks, so here's what we're working with. My wife hit the deer right here on this side. It dented the fender in just a little bit right here and popped the little trim piece off just a little bit. So we got two new little tabs for that. Uh, the bumper, basically I pulled the bumper off and then it pushed the radiator support into the air conditioner condenser. So the first thing I did was order that new air conditioner condenser and I put that in after I pulled the radiator support out just a little bit. And I used a little bit of manual manipulation to pull that thing out, but we got a special tool now, and I'll show you that here in a minute, to help get that thing out just a little bit further. Anytime you're working on the front end of a vehicle or anywhere near an airbag sensor, we want to make sure that our key is off, and we also want to make sure that our battery's been disconnected at least 15 to 20 minutes. Now, I'm a shade tree mechanic, so don't take any of this advice as professional advice. I'm just a shade tree mechanic, just a guy in his garage taking care of business. What we've got to do, everything on here right now pretty much is zip tied in except for the grill. There's a couple support brackets that were bent and twisted and we're going to put those new support brackets in and I have a bumper and a new lower uh, valence piece right here. I don't know exactly what you call it, it's like a decorative piece, but I have a new bumper cover and I have this piece right here and guys this stuff really isn't made out of much of anything so let's get busy here basically I have everything zip tied together okay and the reason I zip tied everything together is just because it's purely simple and easy I've got a bucket of nuts and bolts and fasteners on this little cart over here and we're gonna whip this job out hopefully it won't take me but about an hour and we'll have it looking as good as new so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna lay out a little blankie to work on so I don't have to work on the cold concrete floor here. It's about 35 degrees outside so it's a little bit on the chilly side. We'll get under here with some snips and we'll snip out all these zip ties that I'm holding this thing together with right now. Right under here I just had the bumper held together with some trusty heavy duty zip ties here so that my wife's bumper didn't go flying off the side of the road. And I probably used about 50 too many zip ties. But, better safe than sorry. The real trick to all this is remembering where I put all the zip ties. We used advanced redneck technology to keep this thing together. There we go. That's the old bumper. Go bye bye. So the next piece we have to remove is our grill, okay? And it's held in with just a couple screws and a couple little snaps. Not much to it really. A couple more zip ties out of here and we're done. There's your grill. Now we're not going to toss this grill to the side. This grill cover is brand new. I just popped it over top of the insert. So this is an insert and that is a cover that snaps into place right there. Now let me bring you in here a little closer so you can see the actual damage that was done to the vehicle here, okay? It really didn't hurt anything other than mostly cosmetic stuff but it did whack pretty hard on the radiator support. Let me show you. So right here is the radiator support that was damaged and basically it's moved in yeah, probably that much right there. So I've got a slide hammer kit and we're going to try to hook on the other side of this and pull it out just a little bit more so that everything lines up appropriately. We've got a few other things that are kind of zip tied in place right here but the biggest issue was the movement. You can see it here. Hold on. The movement right here there needs to be more support in this area and all these little support brackets and stuff. I've got new ones. The other ones were just kind of mushed in. So let's get busy. This is the slide hammer kit that I bought on Amazon and you're seeing it open for the very first time here. Let's see if we can get this guy out. Ah, nice little case. I'll post a link to this thing in the description in case you guys want to get one for yourself. Uh, nice. I'm, I was really expecting I heard stuff rattling around in there and I was really expecting all that rattling to be a rattly mess, but awesome. Hey look, another zip tie. I'll let you guys get the first sneak peek. Woo, nice. So the way this works, it has all these little attachments on it and you basically screw these attachments onto the end of the slide hammer, just like so. Once you get that on, this portion slides against this rod right here, okay? So this rod screws onto the other end, 
like so. And then I can hook this attachment on and hammer it back, pulling it. I'll give you a better idea how that works. Let me show you the other stuff that's in here. I've got large ones for pulling out large dents. I can't imagine how handy this is gonna be on the farm. Uh, don't really know what that is. Um, another one for pulling out dents. It also comes with something you could put a screw into and pull out with the screw. I'm gonna have to read the instructions because I don't really know what that thing is. And then this guy, evidently you can screw this in and pull offset. I don't know, this is the, my first time opening it. It didn't come with paperwork, so I guess I'll have to use my imagination, but an awesome essential farm and body tool. Let's give it a shot. I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. So the idea with the slide hammer is that it hammers back and pulls dents out. Now I was having to do this with a hammer and a crowbar and that was no fun. Again, I'll post a link to this thing down on Amazon. It was very affordable. I can't remember the exact price, but I'll post a link to it. You guys are gonna want this tool after you see it in action. I can't wait to play with it. My airbag sensors are here and here. And this right here is my transmission cooler. And at first we thought the transmission cooler was, was bent or busted, but it doesn't look like it busted. It did bust the horn right here, but that's just cosmetic. We'll lay this guy in here, being careful to not damage here. And I'll try the slide hammer. That is so much easier than what I was doing before. I'm just gonna hammer away at it here and we'll get it straightened out and then we'll get the rest of it put together. Let's have some fun with it. If you look right here, you can see how I misshaped it a little bit. We'll straighten all that up before we get done and we'll put a little coat of paint on that so it doesn't rust. Slide hammer, must have tool for your man toolbox, guys. Boom. I think we're gonna use a bigger attachment. Out of this one, I'm gonna move up to this one. You see the difference. <laughs> All right, so we've taken our slide hammer and we pulled out the dent as far as we could get it. Now we're just gonna straighten up this little mess right here that we made when we were pulling the dent out. Basically, you know, things aren't made out of really heavy duty metal anymore. If I were to hit a deer in the old farm truck, the $100 farm truck, I wouldn't even have this problem, but I would never ever be able to bend that metal out. Metal on these new vehicles is just so thin and pliable. It's just not the quality steel that you used to get back in the 70s, 60s, 50s. 40s especially. You look at cars from the 40s and even some cars from the 50s, those things are sitting out in the rain, rusting away. They're still there. They're still holding up. Today's steel isn't designed to last quite as long, but it's also designed to collapse. So the front end of the vehicle is designed to collapse in case of an accident to absorb that impact. So that's what it did. It absorbed the deer. You know, a lot of body work is just beating stuff back out to where it used to be. It's just reshaping metal. A lot of these shows you watch on TV, it's just reshaping metal. Now, if we had a bottomless pit of money, we'd cut this radiator support out and put a brand new one in. But if we did put a brand new one in, it would probably still be weaker than the factory one. Let's make sure everything's straight and make sure we can mount up all our brackets. Now we're never gonna get it back absolutely as straight as it was from the factory unless we replace the metal. So we'll just do our best and we'll do a good job. Had to do a little bit more straightening. Had to pull it out just a little bit more. Now you see me doing the work to this truck right here. This truck is gonna remain on the farm. This truck is gonna be converted over into a farm truck after about 250, 300,000 miles, and we'll use it on the farm. So am I worried about this repair? No, not really. Would I be concerned about it selling it to someone? No, because it's what a body shop would do anyway. The only other option would be to cut out this piece and weld a new one in, but this thing's stout. So I just wanted to let you guys know, this vehicle will most likely spend most of its life here on the farm. It's the best way to get the money out of your truck. When you buy one, use it up. So we're gonna put a little paint on this, okay? But we're just gonna use a little bit of semi-gloss Rust-Oleum paint and we'll shake it up real good. We're just gonna put a coat on there just to keep it from rusting in case I exposed any bare metal. We'll give that a little time to dry while we're getting all our parts together. The reason we use the cardboard here is because you don't want to get any paint on your air conditioner condenser. This stuff isn't rocket science, guys. It's simple. 
you can do your own auto repairs. I encourage you to get out there and try to work on your own vehicle. Folks, this is the portion of the video where I ask you to click that like button. If you like what you're seeing, if you're enjoying this kind of shade tree mechanic work, click that like button. I encourage you to leave a comment. If you have any comments, please leave uplifting comments. If you have any suggestions or questions, please leave them down there. If you leave condescending, hateful remarks, I'll just delete them. So you might as well not waste your time typing. Nobody likes a keyboard bully or a keyboard know-it-all. Well, folks, we're just going to get the wrenching on this, get to working on it, and we'll come on back when we get ready to hang the new bumper here. So we'll see you in just a few minutes after I get done wrenching this thing up and putting all the pieces back in. All right, guys. I'd be lying to you if I said this wasn't another day. We're on day two right now because I had some little clips and tabs that were missing, okay? So I had to go down to the Toyota dealership, and man, what a nice group of people. Uh, they gave me schematics of every little piece and part that I would need and that's for the whole front end they have a headlight assembly little schematic and they have a, a grill schematic as if I didn't know to put that in that spot but that's cool that's awesome so the guys are really friendly really nice and they saw me pull up in the YouTube van and they're like hey what, what's that all about so kind of fun still gonna get busy here but now I've got a treasure map to figure out how it all goes back together Shouldn't take me very long, I hope. We're probably on hour number four, I think. After pulling all the pieces and parts, straightening out the dents and stuff, and reinstallation. So hopefully, I think four hours of labor ought to get it. So I'm gonna get busy here. You know how it is when you stop a project right in the middle and you have to come back to it? It's a pain in the butt. So I'm getting all my parts and pieces together now, gathering up my jigsaw puzzle. Biggest challenge is the multitude of stickers on here, and they're all made of some sort of material that bionically disintegrates as soon as I start trying to pull it off. You don't want to look underneath the hood and see a bunch of stickers. Got that one off. Parts came from Toyota in a nice resealable Ziploc bag. I don't know if that's like Toyota policy or if that's my uh, local dealership, but man. They really shine, they really do a good job. Let's just get this done really quick. All right, folks, we got it all done. It looks good, doesn't it, Blake? This here's Blake. He came for a visit. Does it look good? <laughs> Tell me, does it feel smooth? All right, passes the Blake test. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. I wanted to show you, my wife hit a deer. If you put a little bit of sweat and use these two right here and that right there, you'll save yourself some money. So we saved ourselves about $2,000 by doing the work ourselves and taking it to a local body shop and having them paint the bumper. Cost us 220 bucks. Thanks a lot for joining me today, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. If this is your first time, click that little bell down there. It'll notify you when I post a new video. All right. See you later. You ready? Come on, come closer. Look right here. Um, on three. One, two, three. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Now, the moment of truth. Okay. Uh -huh.